Hi guys, I'm back with my uh, three month uh, follow up and then also to let you know about some other tests and procedures that I've recently had done. So first of all, just so I don't forget, I want to thank all of my old and my new subscribers. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for everyone who has subscribed to me and everyone that's tuning in for my videos. Um, for those of you who are new, um, my insurance company requires a six month supervised weight loss and they actually do not make any stipulations that I have to lose a certain amount of weight or anything like that. However, my clinic requires me to not lose any, not lose, not gain <laughs> any weight uh, month to month. So it doesn't matter if overall your weight is down, if you gain any weight on any particular weigh-in, then they will make you start the whole program over again and they will not submit to your insurance company. And actually just last week, um, a girl that I know, that happened to her. She gained one pound and now she has to start the whole process over again. And I have even heard of people who have gained even less than a pound, like a half a pound, and they had to start all over again. And so, you know, that's very strict, especially if, you're, if your insurance company doesn't actually care if you gain. Um, it's very strict, I think, for the clinic to have that rule. However, it's so scary, it helps to keep me on track because, you know, sometimes you don't know what the scale is going to do. And so the only way to kind of ensure, hopefully, that you don't gain is by trying to be, you know, you know, as perfect as possible. So that has really helped me stay on track. So speaking of that, uh, let me tell you what my numbers are. Uh, so last month, last month I weighed 271.8 pounds. And this month, I came in at 264.8 pounds. So that is a loss of seven pounds for the month. And for over these three months, I have lost 23 pounds. So I'm very happy with that. That is actually ahead of my uh, personal goal. I had just made up a personal goal uh, of 20 pounds that I should be at 20 pounds at this point. And so I'm three pounds beyond that. So I am very happy with that. So um, let me talk a little bit about my uh, appointment at my surgeon's office. Um, once again, I was disappointed that I didn't get a chance to actually talk to my surgeon. I had to meet with the physician's assistant. And the only reason I, you know, I, I've mentioned that before, um, I wanted to have my appointments at, um, in the morning. And they said that was fine, but if you have your appointment in the morning, you'll never be able to meet with your surgeon because he doesn't come into the office until the afternoon on Tuesdays. That was the day, that's the days that I have my appointments on. And so she told me that if I met, if I had my appointment at 1 p.m., then I would be able to meet with my surgeon. And that has not <laughs> happened yet. So, you know, I keep being disappointed that, you know, I want to meet with my surgeon because I really liked my surgeon a lot. And so, and I've only, I only met him at the original appointment in May. And then I did get to meet him just last week at my EGD. Um, so anyway, so this month, okay, so I met with the physician's assistant. Uh, she was very pleased with my weight loss. Um, wanted to, uh, you know, basically just talk to me about my exercise. What was I doing? How long was I doing it? Um, I told her that, um, you know, I'm mostly walking on my treadmill. I walk the dogs. I've like increased, um, the distance of the, of their daily walk. And, um, I don't know why, I don't know why the dogs are barking. Please, please. Um, I think there's a school 
bus out there. Um, my goal for this month was to get in 5,000 steps a day. I have not done that. <laughs> um, I have probably achieved it maybe 60% of the time. I think 60% of the time, which is very bad. Um, so that's my goal for next month is 5,000 steps a day. Um, I've also been working out on my We Fit. We we fit. We, we plus. What is it called? Anyway, the we. <laughs> um, and then I've also done some exercises that were sent to me in my challenge box that I got. Um, if you look at my previous video, I did a review on challenge box. And so I have used those resistance bands to do a workout. And I will do a separate video later um, in a few weeks on the challenge box and when I get my new challenge box. So anyway, so I told her that, you know, that's what I was doing. Um, I also have an elliptical at home, so I have also been working out on my elliptical and the treadmill, and um, I've been doing some hand weights. I finally added that in this month. So she was happy with, you know, what I'm doing. Um, then I met with the nutritionist. Now, <laughs> The nutritionist and I, in my mind, I feel like we've kind of agreed to disagree. You know, she wants me to drink a shake every day. I refuse to drink a shake every day. Uh, she wants me to not have snacks. I have snacks as part of my meal plan. You know, every time she always asks, so are you snacking? Yes, I'm snacking. But I plan all my snacks and I record all my snacks. I don't graze throughout the day. They're part of my meal plan. Um, so those are things that we had you know, talked about in the past. And I don't replace a meal every day with a shake, but I do, I do it about three days a week or so. Um, and I've been trying different shakes. And so, you know, I have, I have, I have the shakes down. I don't need any more practice with shakes. Um, you know, plus I'm aware that after surgery, my taste might change anyway, and all the shakes that I like now, I might not even like then. Um, so anyway, uh, I can't remember, I don't think I said, the other thing that my, uh, doctor's office requires is that you have to keep a food log, and, yeah, that is a school bus out there, you have to keep a food log. And you have to turn it in every month. And I use my fitness pal and I just print it out every month and turn it in to the nutritionist. Um, and I, you know, on previous months, she's new and so I only had her, I think, la last month was the first time? I guess last month was the first full month that I had her. Um, I don't think that she's actually really had a chance to look at my food logs. Um, a lot of the questions she was asking me were just generic questions that would be answered if she had looked at my food log. So I know that she hasn't actually um, looked at it to see, you know, like when, she, when I met with her the first time, I had already turned in a month uh, of food logs. And so, you know, I don't think that she actually has had a chance to look at my food logs. Um, the reason I bring that up is because when she walked into the room this time, she, I could see that she had my food logs in her hand and I could see that there were markings on there. So obviously she had actually looked at my food logs now and had read them. And so actually the first thing she said is that she's looked over my food logs and she didn't have any recommendations for me. She's like, you know, it looks like you're doing a really good job. Um, you're planning really healthy meals. I don't really have anything to add, you know, what questions do you have for me? So I was very surprised about that because I really have not changed much of anything. Uh, so for her to say that I'm, you know, doing a really good job, um, I'm, I'm pleased with that. And when I say I haven't changed much of anything, I mean I haven't changed what I started doing the first month, I've really been pretty much doing that same thing for all three of these months, and I haven't changed much 
of anything based on any of these appointments. I've just been doing what I know works for me. And, you know, she said, you know, everything looks really good. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, let's see. So next, let me talk about my cardiology consult. So I went in for my cardiology consult in July so that I could be cleared for surgery. And it was during that visit that I was diagnosed with high blood pressure for the very first time. And also the doctor thought that he heard a heart murmur. Now heart murmurs are pretty common, a lot of people have them, but I had never had one before. So the fact that I all of a sudden had a heart murmur, that could have been a sign of something serious. So he ordered a echocardiogram to be done and I had that done two weeks ago. And I just got the results last week. And the echocardiogram is really just an ultrasound of your heart. It is done exactly the same way that they do ultrasounds for pregnant women with the gel and the wand. They just, you know, they wave over your heart. Um, and they're able to, you know, see the ventricles of your heart. They can tell if something is not functioning properly. Um, and also they can see the size of your heart. And so, the cardiologist said that everything was normal. My heart was normal size. Uh, every, it's, you know, everything is operating normally. There's nothing wrong with my ventricles. So I'm all set to go. So I had already had my EKG um, at my first appointment. Um, and my blood pressure had you know, responded really nicely to the low dose of blood pressure medication that he had put me on. So. I'm cleared from the cardiologist for surgery, so I'm very happy about that and very relieved that I don't have any serious heart problem. So the next thing uh, to cross off my list was my EGD. I had that last week. And, you know, the, the procedure that they went through for this EGD actually gave me kind of a sneak peek into how this hospital works because I had the EJ, EGD at the same place where I'm going to have my surgery. Now, afterwards, I actually found out that I could have had it done at a different, uh, like at a clinic or something if I wanted to. Um, some people who found out about their copays in advance you know, I found this out later. They found out that they could get it done for as low as $200 or $250 at um, other places. Um, my copay ended up being $861, and I was not informed of that in advance. I didn't even find out until I was literally sitting there waiting to check in for my procedure that my copay was $861. I had no idea. Um, now, even if I had known, I don't think that I would have gone anyplace else because I just think it's better to go ahead and have it at the hospital with my surgeon that I know and trust. Um, but yeah, I was very surprised about that. So make sure you uh, know what your copay is going to be for your EGD because it might be really expensive. Um, but two days before the procedure, I got a call from like this nurse educator person and, you know, she talked to me about the procedure, made sure that I understood what was going to happen, you know, talked about my past medical history, uh, what I was currently taking, um, and to give me instructions on what I could take the day of surgery and what I couldn't take the day of surgery. And then, of course, um, not eating or drinking anything after midnight on the day of the procedure and the day before the procedure. Also, then they sent me two little videos that actually kind of explained the procedure and then one that uh, talked about um, anesthesia and the, you know, the purposes behind the anesthesia and the different types of anesthesia and side effects and things like that. Um, which I'm assuming, you know, they're going to do all these same things right before my surgery. So they really make sure that you uh, understand everything that's going to happen to you. When I checked in for my procedure, you have to show up two hours early because they want time to get an IV in and they, you know, want to make sure that you're, um, you know, hydrated with that I IV for a while before they get started. Um, 
the, all of the nurses that I met were so nice. You can, you know, sometimes people are just nice no matter what. But these people, you can tell not only were they nice, but they really seemed to enjoy their job. They enjoyed what they were doing. Um, they seem to be happy people, happy at work. And so, you know, that's important. You want happy nurses. So uh, it made me feel really good because these are the same. I mean, the nurses won't be the same. But it gave me a good feeling that, um, you know, maybe everyone else in the hospital, when I have my surgery, that they will be just as happy and friendly as these nurses were. Um, as a matter of fact, I, the nurse gave me a choice of where I wanted the IV to be placed, which I really liked that because I had a colonoscopy and an endoscopy before in the past, and they just automatically put it in my hand, even though I was like, you're going to put it in my hand, I don't want it in my hand. And she's like, she insisted that's where they put it, and it hurt, and it hurt for like, a few weeks afterwards and so even though that was over 10 years ago I still remember how bad that hurt and so to me it was very nice that she gave me a choice and you know I'm like do not put it in my hand and she didn't um, so I was able to talk to the anesthesiologist before the procedure and then also my surgeon and um, they did the procedure and everything was normal I had uh, the surgeon seemed slightly surprised that I had no hint of gastritis or acid reflux or anything um, because he said that most overweight people, especially someone who's been overweight their entire life like I have, uh, usually have some signs of acid, um, you know, acid reflux or something. Even if they don't actually feel any symptoms, there's usually some type of damage there. And I had none. I had um, no signs of reflux, no ulcers, no, like, nothing. And uh, no hernia. <laughs> so I didn't think that I had any problem because, you know, I'm one of those people, I don't even get heartburn. I could count on one hand how many times in my entire life that I've even had heartburn. I just, I don't have any of those. I've never had any of those symptoms. That's not where my... My problems are. <laughs> um, so yeah, so my EG, EGD was normal, so I'm very happy about that. Now, the one thing that wasn't normal, uh, so after the procedure, um, everything was fine. I, you know, woke up, you know, one time like I was supposed to. I was released from the from uh, the hospital probably about 30 minutes after the procedure. Everything was on schedule the way it was supposed to be. Um, we went out to eat, you know, because I was hungry, and but about two hours after the procedure, I started feeling really bad, like dizzy, lightheaded, nauseous. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to throw up. Um, I'm so glad that I had taken the day off. Uh, so, you know, I went home and I went to bed and I basically was in bed the rest of the evening. This was Thursday. Well, then on Friday, I was supposed to work. And I got up and I uh, started working and I was dizzy. I couldn't keep my eyes open. I couldn't focus. I was lightheaded. And, um, you know, I was scared that I was going to make a mistake because um, I'm a pharmacist and you do not want someone, you know, checking your medication who is not feeling well in that way. It's like I could barely even see straight. I felt like I was seeing uh, double and I hate it to, you know, tell my, my supervisor that I was sick um, because I work from home. They really expect you to rarely ever call in sick since you work from home. And but I was just afraid, you know, because I'm checking orders on a computer screen. And so, you know, I was afraid that I was going to make a mistake. So after 40 minutes, I ended up um, calling it a day. I was asleep off and on for the rest of Friday. Um, Saturday, I still didn't feel right. Then Sunday, I had to work again. And I made it through, but I still didn't feel good. I mean, basically today, Wednesday, is the first day that I have felt back to normal. I have felt like myself. All of these other days, I have felt terrible, nauseous. 
I mean, I don't, I don't understand why. And the thing is, is that in the past, I've had major surgery before and an endoscopy and colonoscopy and other procedures where I was, where I was given anesthesia and I've never had any problems at all. Now, it was more than 10 years ago that I've had all this stuff, and so I don't know if it's age or if it's the drugs, although technically they should be better now. I mean, as a matter of fact, the anesthesiologist joked about that because I said, oh, I've done this before. And she's like, yeah, but we have much better drugs now. Well, I don't know. I need the old drugs because I did better on the old drugs. So I don't know what all of that was about. Um, you know, I will definitely inform my surgeon during my next appointment. And then also, of course, make sure that the anesthesiologist knows, uh, you know, right before my, my next, my surgery <laughs> for my sleeve. But anyway, I'm glad that everything is checked off. So now I'll, everything is crossed off my list. And now I just have three more months of weigh-ins. Um, oh shoot, I'm at 21 minutes. I am so sorry. Um, I've been tagged. I am going to do that sometime later on in the next few weeks. Um, I'm also going to do another challenge box review and then tell you about how I've done with, with my current challenge box. Um, I'm actually going to Vegas soon for my birthday in September. And so I'll be turning 45 and it will be my last trip to Vegas before my surgery. So I'm very excited about this trip. So I'll also be telling you, you know, how everything went with my trip. So I am going to go now and, um, you know, I will talk to you guys again in a few weeks. Bye. Take care.